everyone, I'm going to be doing a slightly different video today. I'm going to talk about a few of my favourite perfumes that I currently have in my collection. I've split them into a few categories to make it easier and I've also written down the notes of them all so that I can tell you what's in them. That way if you have any interest then you, these might interest you. So, before we get started, I'll do my nails first. I just painted them today, so they're still a bit, like, messy. But I've got Sabretooth on my pinky and my thumb. And then I have Mermaid Bait on my pointer and ring. And then I've got Moonicorn on my middle finger and I really like Moonicorn. It has a really beautiful green shimmer and it's by Mooncat. They're all by Mooncat. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just gonna get I'm just gonna get started. If you hear anything in the background, it's my cats. They are just having a good time today. Very good time. So, um, the first one I have that I would put this in an all year round category, I only have one, and it is the Kaoli um, Musk number 12. I got this in a set from, I think it was either Cult Beauty or Beauty Bay, but Kaoli is a fragrance line that's an extension of Huda Beauty. And I got this in a set with three others. Um, there's a citrus and an elixir, which are not in this one because they're not as nice as the, the two that I've put in my list here. And I wanted to kind of make this my options quite minimal so I wouldn't um, overlap or anything or have too much perfume in one video. But this is musk. And it does have a very heavy musky scent, but it's incredibly, I would describe it incredibly feminine, very easy to wear, very stylish and sophisticated, I would say. It's just nice to wear every day and it's light enough to be worn every day. It's light enough for spring and summer, but it's musky enough and sweet enough for autumn to winter. So it's quite nice. But the notes in this are freesia, lotus, musk, jasmine, vanilla, and sandalwood. I don't really smell freesia when it comes to perfume is quite weak. With the jasmine, I don't really get it either, even though jasmine when there when jasmine is a, is a note on my skin, it comes out quite uh, proud with this scent it's not so much for me i get a lot of the musk and the sandalwood and the vanilla it's lovely it's just a nice womanly perfume with very heavy musk and some sweet some like warm sweetness and some woodiness but because it's so light you can wear it in the spring and summer too so i like wearing that all year round I'm gonna go into um, the spring perfumes. I actually almost, I have four in each category, like in each season, except winter, I have five in winter because wintery perfumes are more my style of perfume. I do like very heavy um, perfumes, excuse me. <laughs> I have freaking hair in my mouth. I like, a lot of vanilla and patchouli and musk and wood. I like perfumes that are quite strong as well, especially in the winter time. So yeah, but let me get into the springtime ones. So the first one, I still have hair in my mouth. My goodness, the problem with um, having very uh, needy cats First one I have is this one. 
Yes, this is Dolce and Cabana number three. This is L'Imperatrice. I've had this before, actually. I got this for Christmas from my grandmother. And this is probably the fruitiest perfume I have in my collection. And the fruitiest perfume I'll show you, I will be showing in this video. If you like fruity fr uh, fragrances, you will really, really like this. It's very, um... Juicy and watery and um, ozonic. It's really, really, really beautiful, but very, very fruity and quite sweet. But it's not sweet in a uh, sugary way. It's sweet in a natural, you know how uh, fruits just smell naturally sweet? That's what it smells like. It has kiwi which you can smell for sure, rhubarb, yes, pink pepper, watermelon, cyclamen, jasmine, lemon tree, musk, and sandalwood. You can, my skin picks up on the lemon tree a lot as well, but because it's lemon tree and not lemon, it kind of brings it down and helps it be a little bit woody and makes it grown up rather than making it smell like a fruity spray that you get whenever you're a young teenager like think of the all all those fruity perfumes from or, or those fruity sprays that you would get as a teenager that never ever lasted but make it grown up you get l'imperatrice very very nice perfume it doesn't last an awful lot long time um which is a bummer but it's fine um it given the nature it is an eau de toilette so given and the kayali perfume i think it's just an eau de parfum which is a little bit stronger than an eau de, than an eau de toilette um so of course the it is not gonna last as long but it is really really lovely and it's just re very refreshing and nice it's quite thirst quenching too uh i do i did realize a lot of people wear that in the summer I personally wear it more in the spring because when it comes to summer perfumes, I like it to I like them to be a little bit more tropical when it comes to the fruit. That's not a very tropical fruit to me. Uh, the next one I have, this one is um, Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel. I've had this for a while. This is a very special perfume because I like wearing this mainly like on, like on special occasions. So I would wear this on my birthday. Because my birthday is in spring, my birthday is in March. It's actually um, 20th of March, so technically it's the first day of spring, last day of winter. But this is a very patchouli heavy scent. It's very oriental. It has a lot of orange blossom in it as well. So it has kind of like that bitter citrus. But because on my skin it doesn't pick up much on the orange, it picks up more on the orange blossom. It's a little bit more floral. So it's quite um, heady in, in, in that way, not necessarily like a fruity, juicy scent because of the orange. It does have orange in it. It has orange, mandarin orange, bergamot, Turkish rose, jasmine, mimosa, ylang ylang, patchouli, white musk, <laughs> vanilla, vetiver, tonka bean and a poponax and i looked that up and a poponax is like a resin similar to amber and beeswax is kind of similar to that um for me what i when i said earlier it's doesn't really pick up a lot on the orange it picks up more on the orange blossom so to me it's not a very fruity scent it's very floral so it's quite it fills your head whenever i i describe anything as very heady what i mean is that you know when you smell a perfume and it just fills your your head and it's you know um if you're quite sensitive to perfume this might give you a headache that's what i mean by that it's quite strong um and it has that bitter afternote because orange blossom tends to smell a little bit bitter so there we go it's very very lovely though i really really like it it does have a sweet under undertone to it as well because of the vanilla and uh, my skin picks up on the vanilla quite a lot as well not so much on the musk or the lang lang 
Um, I do get a little bit of the rose, but it's not, um, it's not a garden center rose, not an elderly rose, none of that, so. Then I have two by the same brand. These are the last two that I will show you from for spring, and they're both by Jo Malone. And I have the first one, which is Earl Grey and Cucumber. This is the very first girl, um, Jo Malone per, uh, cologne I ever purchased. I've had this for quite a while. This has um, bergamot, water notes, uh, jasmine, red apple, cucumber, angelica, beeswax, Virginia cedarwood, musk, and vanilla. So for me, so these colognes are quite, they don't really last a very long time because they are cologne. Um, colognes don't tend to last as long. They're one up, I think, from being the weakest. They're like the second weakest when it comes to perfume concentration. This is a very bitter, very sour, juicy, no, very bitter, sour milky it's quite it's quite a, like a milky scent and i think it's the beeswax it does really smell like earl grey tea if you're familiar with that but with a tiny little bit of milk even though there's no milk in this i think it might be the beeswax and the vanilla kind of mixing together to make that milky base it's very very unique it also smells quite clean because of that cucumber but not clean in a clean linen way just clean in a um, I think it's because the, the cucumber has quite a watery scent. The cucumber and the water notes together kind of make it kind of water, water it down a little bit and doesn't make it so sickly sweet or sickly sour and bitter with that bergamot. So it's really, really lovely. Unfortunately, it just doesn't last a very long time. But that's with clones, unfortunately. But I don't really wear these a lot because... They are a little bit more on the pricey side. And they don't really last that long, unfortunately. Uh, the next one I have is the Blackberry and Bay one. This one lasts a lot longer on my skin. I really like this one. This one, I'll read the notes. It has Blackberry, Bay Leaf, of course. Um, grapefruit, Cedarwood, Vetiver, and Floral Notes. But it didn't say what kind of floral notes. This... It's just straight up smells like blackberry and bay leaf. See everything else? Not really. <laughs> I, my skin doesn't get any of that. It's literally just blackberry and bay leaf. It's very juicy and earthy. It's it's it combines those two perfectly and it really does. It is the most realistic blackberry scent out ever tried and it's beautiful this is a perfume i like to wear if i'm going out and i'm more going like adventuring um like for instance for instance earl grey and cucumber would be oh um we're going out to go shopping and get some lunch this is we're going to a museum or we're going on a walk somewhere you know what i mean because it's quite strong. It is kind of borderlines on the unisex as well. Because it's literally just blackberry and bay. And, and bay leaf. And that is it. At least on, on my skin. Anyway. And that's what my nose detects too. So it's a good unisex perfume I think. It's because of that bay leaf. It brings it back and stops it from being too. Yeah. It makes it unisex. Excuse me. Moving on to summer. I have one more Jo Malone. So I have four summers. So the first one is Wood Sage and Sea Salt. This is my favourite Jo Malone cologne I've tried. I really want to try the Pomegranate Noir, but they're expensive, so I'm. it's going to be a while before I try it. But this has Sea Salt, Sage, Grapefruit, Musk Mallow, which has a similar scent to just regular Marshmallow, but it's more musky. Hence, excuse me, Musk Mallow. And seaweed. This smells so fresh and earthy and salty. If you like ozonic, aquatic, um, 
perfumes that kind of smell like like they've been mixed in with with air almost uh you will like this it really does smell like salty sea air i don't really smell the seaweed though but i do smell the sea salt and the sage and i do smell a little bit of the grapefruit but the grapefruit's so it doesn't last that long at least on me anyway but it's just a lovely fresh salty aquatic scent with a little bit of earthiness because of that sage and it's wonderful unfortunately it doesn't last that long but but in the summertime though it does last a little bit because of the heat so it helps it kind of warm up a little bit um moving on i have also wrote these down in order too hopefully that way i don't get too confused but next one i have escada Taj sunset Remember I said that Limpetatrice was probably the fruitiest perfume I have in my collection? I think this might be, this might top it. Um, Escada make lovely perfumes. I, whenever I used to collect perfumes, whenever I was a lot younger, I had quite a few Escada ones. But this is the one that I like the most. I actually only have one Escada perfume now, so I have quite a few of them. Because Escada bring, come out with perfumes like every year or so, and they're quite summery. But this has... Mango, Nectarine, Blood Orange, um, Raspberry, Star Apple, Water Lily, uh, Lotus, Coconut, Musk, and Sandalwood. And this has a very, it's very heavy on the mango and it's very heavy on the Blood Orange and the Coconut for me. And of course the Musk and Sandalwood whenever it dries down. It's incredibly juicy and tropical it smells like fruit juice but it's not super super sugary uh, the way fruit juice would be it's just quite it's juicy in a fruit juice way but not sugary and the musk and the sandal would help tone it down and it lasts quite a long time so i really really like this one it's lovely to wear on very very warm days it, helps, it makes them a little bit more bearable because I can't stand summertime because it's just too damn warm. Because <laughs> it's very humid here. And we have um, homes that are built to keep the heat in. So you're pretty much dying in indoors. The next one I have is a little tiny one. This is um, Cheap and Chic um, by Moschino or Moschino. And this is I Love Love. It's a little tiny, tiny thing. This has grapefruit, orange, lemon, red currant, sugarcane, bulrush, which is a kind of like dried flower, I think, or dried um, grass, lily of the valley, tea rose, cinnamon, musk, uh, cedar, and thanaka wood, which I've never heard of before. But this smells um, exactly the same uh, as Dolce & Gabbana light blue which I adore, but it's quite expensive. So this is like a really good dupe. Unfortunately, you can, you have to get this one online because this was limited edition. But this one is a very clean, fresh lemon scent. Not lemon, like not lemon um, spray or anything, you know, whenever you clean your bathroom with lemon or anything like that. And it has very heavy, it's very, very heavy on the, on the, cedar and the musk so it's think of fresh lemon with a lot of musk and a lot of wood behind it it's quite dry um whenever you think of lemon you think of like juicy lemon it's not a very juicy lemon scent at least on me it's quite dry and quite musky so it's really really nice it's all it's almost like dehydrated lemon kind of rather than um like a juicy lemon at least on my skin it's lovely and i really really enjoy it it's very easy to wear it's it's not too too much it's lovely and then the last um <laughs> they're fighting on my bed the last summer one is alien this is the eau extraordinaire version um this has bergamot tea uh, Tunisia, Tunisian neroli, lemon, lime, and orange in it. So it doesn't have a lot of ingredients or notes. This has the 
jasminey base of alien because if you're familiar with the original alien it's very heavy on jasmine but this doesn't have any jasmine in it so i think it's the um tunisian neroli that's kind of the um substitute for the um jasmine is in the original alien but take the original alien and just pound it with citrus <laughs> just pound it with citrus and tea the tea is very very fresh it really does smell like sweet tea it does with especially with the lemon the lime and the orange you know if you t if you think of like lipton's iced tea it does smell like that but a little bit more floral because of that Tunisian neroli. But not floral to the point where you're in a garden centre. Just a little bit floral to pull it back from it. Literally smelling like green, like uh, Lipton's iced tea. You know? Just pulling it away from that, you know? It's so lovely. It lasts quite a, quite a good uh, time on me as well. And it's quite woody, even though... Um, and quite musky on me, even though it doesn't have any wood or musk in it. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's kind of cool how different perfumes uh, last on different people. Um, moving on to my uh, autumn ones. I have this one. This one is Beckham's Signature by David Beckham. Which I've tried to get a replacement of. Like, I've tried to, like, find this. But I can't really seem to, to find anywhere to buy it. I really really like this perfume i've had this perfume for a while um but this has star anise green apple orchid vanilla heliotrope patchouli amber and musk for me i get the star anise the apple vanilla and patchouli amber and musk obviously it's a very juicy it, it, it's a very crisp juicy apple and it has that really lovely spice to it because of that star anise. And it's a really good kind of um, transition because it has that from like summer to autumn because it has that juiciness of the apple because it has such heavy star anise and um, patchouli, amber and the musk are so heavy. It brings it into autumn but because of that green apple kind of just freshens everything up a, a little bit so that's re it's pretty good for like september when at least in northern ireland sometimes in september we have uh, it's called an indian summer um where the weather's still kind of summery when it should be cooling down that's when this kind of fits i would say it's quite um corporate as well like i would wear this like to a job interview or a job like something that's quite professional because it's just so nice because that green apple just helps everything smell fresh but not super super fruity because um sometimes i don't know why but sometimes like super fruity perfumes can sometimes seem a little bit unprofessional in like a professional environment so that green apple helps it to stay fruity but not to the point where people you know you're deemed not professional if you're trying to impress somebody in a job interview or something like that uh the next one i have this princess and i don't know where the little thing is i think because my own little princess probably took it which is ebony but this has water lily apricot apple mandarin Dark chocolate, guava, tiara flower, tuberose, vanilla, amber, and wood. And this is an oriental perfume. It's very, very sweet and powdery. That would be the best way that I would describe it. Sweet and powdery. It does. You do smell a little bit of that um, apple and a little bit of the guava. But for me, the most prominent is the dark chocolate the vanilla, <laughs> the amber, and the wood. Um, however, it doesn't have any musk in it, but it is quite powdery. Um, and I think it might be a mixture of the tiara flower, the tuber rose, mixing with like the vanilla and the wood, kind of making it that like powdery scent. At least on me, it's quite powdery, but but it really does smell like 
powdery dark chocolate with a little bit of guava and a little bit of apple. Just a tiny bit. I've noticed quite a few of my perfumes have a lot of apple in them. Hmm. This is lovely. I've been wearing this perfume for years since I was... Oh, since I was like maybe 14, 15, I'm 28 now. So I've been wearing it for 14 years and I'm still not bored of it. So that must say something. <laughs> um, the next one I have is another one. I've been, I've been wearing this one since I was like 16, 17. This one's 212 VIP by Carolina Herrera. This one has rum, passion fruit, gardenia, musk, vanilla and tonka bean. Very, very simple. This one's a lot heavy. That we're moving into the more heavy perfumes now and the perfumes that I would wear all year round, but I don't because they don't fit, you know? Um, they would be way too heavy and way too, like, sickening and just in spring and summer because of the heat. But if I were to live in a wintry environment that's quite cool, I would wear this all the time. It's very, very heavy on the rum and the vanilla. It's very, very boozy. If you like alcohol perfumes, like whiskey, rum, this is very heavy on the rum, then you will really, really like this. It's very, very heavy. And it's very heavy on the musk as well. I don't really smell the passion fruit or the gardenia, but yeah, but... Boozy rum, vanilla, musk. Very, very heavy. Very, very strong. Very, very sexy. Like, very sexy. So if you want to feel sexy, 212 VIP. Which, <laughs> considering I was wearing that to school when I was, like, 17. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. It's, I, was, I was probably too young to wear it, but I don't give a shit. Um, then the last uh, win winter one, this not winter, um, autumnal one is Burberry Brit. This has almond, lime, pear, candied almond, sugar, peony, vanilla, tonka bean, amber, and mahogany wood. This is, again, it's very heavy on the almond and the vanilla. And it also, I don't, I do kind of smell a little bit of the lime, but when it's only whenever you first spray it. And then the lime kind of, it, poof, kind of evaporates quite quickly. And then you're left with the amber, mahogany, vanilla, tonka, all that stuff. But again, this one's a very vanilla heavy perfume, but it has a little bit of that like marzipani kind of scent with the almond. It has a little bit of a nuttiness um, and it has a little bit of the a unisex um, hint because of the mahogany wood in it as well. And the lime, because mahogany and lime are used quite a lot in male, male cologne. So it has that nice unisex. So I think if anybody could wear could wear this and pull this off. It's really beautiful. I also had the original the uh, lighter one, like the um the eau de toilette one. That one's quite nice too. Um but I do prefer the eau de parfum. It's a lot heavier. Uh but yeah this one again is very sexy and sophisticated this one is something that you can wear like every day if you wanted to while with 212 it's a little bit more um if you it's a little bit more um specific day you know like a specific time you know it's date or something like that this one you can wear every day it's a sexy scent you can wear every day i really really enjoy it and i can't and i'm kind of sad that it's not autumn because like i could spray it now if i wanted to but it'd be way too heavy which sucks. Okay, I'm going to move on to the wintry ones, which are in the next part of the day. Okay. The net, right, so I have five, just because I like heavy wintry perfumes. So I've got Hidden Fancy by Britney Spears. This one has orange, tangerine, lemon, verbena, neroli, sweet notes that didn't specify. Clove, lily, jasmine, vanilla, amber, wood, and sandalwood. So it has two different kinds of wood. This one, um, I've been wearing this for quite a while. I think I've been wearing this just as long as um, Princess. But I remember with this in particular, whenever I would, um, not this particular bottle, <laughs> um, I've like repurchased it and everything like that. But whenever I would 
have to stand and wait for the bus for school or college in the winter time it would be so rough and I would wear a woolen scarf and I'd spray it and I would help and I would smell this and it would help kind of warm me up a little bit it's a very love it's a very warm citrusy sweet scent it's like it 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 literally smells like an orange creamsicle dipped in cloves that's the best way i could describe it very heavy on the orange and very heavy on the clove and very heavy on the vanilla but it has a little bit of a creaminess to it um and it's not uh even though I described it as like a creamsicle covered in cloves, it's not, um, it's not like whenever you wear it, you're going to smell like a creamsicle because it has the clove and because it has two kinds of wood, it kind of pulls it back a little bit and stops it from literally smelling like that. But it's the closest I could describe it, like a creamsicle covered in cloves. It's beautiful. I enjoy it. It brings back memories for me too um just especially whenever I would go to college there was only one bus that took me home from college and there were times where like I would get out let's say three right and then the bus would supposed to be there around like 19 minutes past three and I wouldn't show up until like five o'clock you know and it would be raining and it would be dark and it would be like awful um and I just wanted to get home or sometimes I would stay uh later at college because I'm doing my work because I never brought my work home because I would not be able to get anything done whenever I would go home uh whenever I would stay I would get work done and then that'll be it and then I'll be able to go home and do whatever the fuck I wanted but like just waiting <laughs> like I just want to go home I miss my I miss my cat I miss my dog I had a dog at um uh at that time too like this was like over a decade ago and like it brings back those memories it also brings back those memories every time I saw the uh, a bus and we go out of order and I'm like so yeah you get like pretty good it's cool how like the memory works um the next one i have is this one is um, angel muse by thierry mugler this one i forgot how good this smells and i literally chose all these yesterday because i was like i was going through them all i'm like hmm blah 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 and I, I'm like oh it's like I've never it's like this is the first time I've ever smelt it this has um pink pepper grapefruit hazelnut spread patchouli and vetiver literally the pink pepper and the grapefruit no they don't exist it's the hazelnut spread patchouli and the vetiver that is what I get it's very um gourmand very sweet um in that candy like way because of that he uh heels on that spread and that patchouli in the vetiver because it's so heavy it stops it from uh smelling too ridiculous and too literal <laughs> it's lovely but if you like hazelnut if you like um rich chocolatey uh scents then you would really really like this i really really like this lasts forever as well so if if you noticed in like my springtime perfumes are like i've got like this much left but these they don't they really don't um you don't need a lot to make them last so that's another thing that uh another reason why i like um winter perfumes so much next one i have uh, this is the other kaoli one i i mentioned uh earlier this is vanilla 28 This has uh, vanilla orchid, jasmine, brown sugar, tonka bean, amber, amber wood, musk, and patchouli. That's so nice. Hi! I'll pay attention to you in a minute. We're, ne we're nearly finished. <laughs> I know, honey. This, if you like vanilla, if you like sugary scents, 
you will like this. Oh, it's so heavy and so sweet and so warm and cozy. It's beautiful. The brown sugar, for me, it's the brown sugar, the tonka bean and the amber that really come out the most. Um, and I think because in the perfume, instead of using vanilla, because they, they use vanilla orchid, it just makes it quite womanly and stops it from being um so sugary sweet that you think of a teenager you know what i mean it's it's beautiful if you like heavy vanilla if you like sweet like really really sugary sweet cozy you will really like the vanilla you will really really enjoy this one for i guarantee it i guarantee it the next one i have is from ted baker this is london and uh, ted baker london and this is in the amelia this has almond, rhubarb, magnolia, jasmine, heliotrope, licorice, maple leaf, tonka bean, and patchouli. This smells kind of like Christina Aguilera's By Night. And it also kind of smells a little bit like Hypnotic Poison by Dior. You know the red one? Hypnotic Poison, that's the only poison I like. The other poisons are just way, they're like, huh? no. They really are. Like, but, but the fact that they're called poison makes sense because they're so heavy. But this, I love it. It's for on my skin. It's very heavy on the almond and the licorice, and the tonka bean, and of course with the patchouli in the background because I like patchouli. My skin really, really clings very well to patchouli. So, but for me, heavy on the licorice and the almond, and then with the tonka and patchouli in the background. This one, um, it's not. It's it is quite. It is quite sweet. It's oriental. It's kind of like on the fence between a gourmand and an oriental because of that almond and licorice. But because it's not so sweet, it's more leaning on the oriental than is the gourmand part, you know? But if you're familiar with um, By Night by Christina, Christina Aguilera or Hypnotic Poison by Dior, then you may what may like this, but it's very heavy on the licorice. So if you're not a big fan of licorice, you're not gonna like it. So another one, actually, an honorable mention that I the reason why I didn't mention this one is how low I have. The, this is low Lolita Lampica. I love this. This is very heavy on the um licorice as well. This has licorice and cherry in it and vanilla. It's beautiful. It's like uh, I remember reading a um a review. And someone said it was like wearing a really pink frilly dress but putting a, a leather jacket on top. And I'm like, yes. But this, um, I have, I love doing like scent layering and things like that. And I have um, Cherries and Cheer from Body Shop. I got it for Christmas. See that with this on top because of the cherry and the vanilla. And the, oh my, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But this is an honorable mention. But the only reason why I didn't add it is because I literally only have like this much left. It sucks. Uh, and then the last uh, winter perfume I have is C by Giorgio Armani. This has cassis, may rose, freesia, vanilla, patchouli, wood, and ambroxan. And ambroxan is like amber, but it's like, it has like a slightly stronger scent. Okay, this one is very vanilla heavy as well. But this one um, has a lot of floral backing it up. You really do smell the rose. Um, and so it helps to just make it more grown up and more mature, you know. So if you like vanilla, you will. You may like this. But if you don't like rose, you won't like this. Because the rose really is behind the vanilla. And it helps to make it very full-bodied and just gr just gr grown up and stops it from being too sweet too sickly too cloying like the keali like that might you know depending on your um scent profile that might be too cloying and too sweet for some people but something like c because it has that rose in the background it stops it from being so sickly sweet and helps ha have that floral and it kind of makes it a little bit more two-dimensional because of that that floral note it's 
it's really really lovely but i think it's because um it's may rose i'm not sure not necessarily sure what may rose is but i'm sure it's a little bit more um it's probably more of a gentle smelling rose uh then it doesn't make it so heavy because sometimes rose on me is just too much but that's lovely um and then i have only have three more perfumes to show and these are the perfumes that i kind of wear at home the most i do wear the other perfumes that i mentioned at home as well but because they're a bit more expensive i tend to wear them out these ones i tend to wear at home so the first one i'm going to show you is fancy by jessica simpson this was the first perfume i ever this is the first thing i ever bought when i first opened my banking account when i was 16. this is the exact same bottle so i've had this for 12 <laughs> this is the exact same bottle it hasn't changed scent or anything it's freaking awesome this has red berries pear apricot gardenia jasmine caramel almond amber sandalwood and vanilla this is just caramel and amber and vanilla see everything else no <laughs> very very creamy and cozy warm vanilla vanilla caramel if you don't like vanilla caramel, you're not going to like it. I like wearing this especially um, in the winter time, more so, um, whenever I'm at home. But I still wear it at home anyway. Um, so, yeah. I don't really wear this in the summertime if I'm at home because it's a bit too sweet. So, yeah. But, yeah. But I don't really wear this outside because for me it's more of a stay-at-home with tea, listening to scary stories, watching horror, listening to true crime, that kind of thing. So I don't really wear it out. Then I have Fantasy Intense by Britney Spears. This has lychee, pear, kiwi, white chocolate, cupcake, jasmine, orchid, patchouli, wood, orris root, and musk. This smells like the original Fantasy. But the base notes of like the orchid, patchouli and the wood, they're kind of amped up a little bit. They're a little bit stronger. While the cupcake and the white chocolate and the lychee, which are really strong in the original, they're kind of toned down a little bit. So the, the intensity is kind of flipped. So this smells a little bit more of the base. It's a little bit more woody and a little bit, um, it's a little bit dry rather than it be like a juicy cupcakey kind of scent so it's literally flipped from the original this is more grown up and i really really like it i prefer this this if you're familiar with um soap and glory um smoothie star line with like that scent that goes really well with this on top because that collection smells very similar to the base of fantasy so this putting fantasy on top or fantasy intense on top just helps with the longevity what concentration yeah this is an eau de parfum but yeah this is nice and the actual bottle is a lot nicer too i think it looks a bit more sophisticated like a deeper like magenta color with beautiful gold around it it's lovely and then I have this one. This is Chanel number no. five. I love this. But it is like an old lady perfume, so I don't really wear it out. <laughs> but um this is very, very musky. Very, very musky. This has aldehydes, which I completely forgot what they were. Um I was I, I knew I should have um looked up aldehyde, but also has a uh, neroli, ylang lang, bergamot and lemon, which is what I get on my skin. Um jasmine, rose, lily of the valley, sandalwood, vanilla, vetiver, um civet. No idea what that is. Um amber, patchouli and musk. So yeah you I get a lot of the neroli and the bergamot first and then like the lemon and the jasmine don't really get a lot of rose or lily of the valley and then whenever it dries down i get the sandalwood vanilla and vetiver 
and a lot of the patchouli it's on the musk it's very heavy with the musk the musk shows up immediately the musk is not what kind of snap was that there we go the musk is not a bass note it's throughout the entire thing it is very very musky and very powdery and it is <laughs> old lady it really is because of that musk and if you don't like musky scents you will absolutely hate it i really really like it i like wearing it at home and whenever i do wear it at home even though it is a chanel like why are you wearing chanel perfume at home one spray that is it just on my wrist no more because <laughs> it's so strong um but i got this for from my grandmother i think it was last year for christmas time and yeah i i wore i've i've worn this so much but because it's one spray and it lasts for so long so long it's like i've <laughs> used like this much it's beautiful oh i love it and it, i don't know why it does remind me of my grandmother because funny enough my grandmother despises this this perfume she is 82 and she thinks this is too old for her so yeah if that puts into to perspective what i mean by old lady if a literal elderly lady thinks it's too old for her then this is this one's the most niche i would say the most most um specific you need to like old lady perfumes to like this which funny enough i don't this is the only old lady perfume i really really like so but it does remind me of my grandmother and i don't know why probably because she gifted it to me so because she knew i really really liked it and this is the eau de toilette by the way not eau de parfum and it lasts forever <laughs> i like it it's really really beautiful um but i do wear it very sparingly too because it is chanel so um i don't want to waste i don't want to waste it too much but oh yeah the lighting kind of changed because one of my cats uh opened my curtains so that's all of my perfumes that i really really enjoy um for the uh different categories um i do have a few others but i didn't add them because they weren't my favorites and i didn't want to um, make the video any longer than it needs to be hopefully i described them decently um Describing perfumes, it was a little bit harder than I thought it would be because at the same time I'm describing it how it smells on my skin and how a perfume smells on my skin would not be how it smells on yours, um, which is why I read out the notes um, so that if you, if you have similar perfumes with similar notes, you'll know better whether or not you'd like it or not. Or if you have, if you've noticed that certain notes stick out more on your skin, you know, for me, um, a lot, a lot of the time, um, tonka bean and vanilla, musk, patchouli, and a lot, a lot of the time, apple really kind of shows up on my skin. Um, so that kind of helps whenever I'm looking for perfumes and things like that. So, because yeah, I never actually realized how much green apple I uh, or apple I have even if, even whenever I was writing all the notes down. But yeah. Hopefully I described them enough and hopefully I described them pretty decently. And yes, I will see you in my next video. Um, my next video is probably going to be a makeup tutorial. That's probably going to be the uh, one that the last tutorial was supposed to be before um, for some reason I just went very crazy with it. I still don't know if I like that look or not, but um yeah we'll see what happens um and then i might do a vlog as well uh depending for easter depends on if the the plans actually go to plan or not but yes uh thank you for watching and um i will see you in my next video bye everybody